Okay, good evening, everybody. Everybody hear me okay? All right, let's get let's get rolling here uh, today. I'm going to record this for you guys and gals. Okay, so um, let me get uh, rolling for you. We won't make this very long. I just want to have a conference call on how we can enter to the exact bar with a small stop on a retracement using my trend filter. Now, this works on all markets. It doesn't matter if you are trading futures, stocks, forex, or currency. This works universal on all markets. Exact same setup I'm going to show you. We've had a lot of members have great success with this system um, using this technique. And um, so I appreciate all the comments that you guys send, Gerald and I. And uh, we, we love having you members in the room. And um, we love seeing success. So, you know, congrats to all you guys and gals that use the system already. For those of you that uh, are intrigued by the system, uh, this is a system built around catching the wrongly positioned or counter trend traders um, and I'm going to show you how that we can position ourselves in the markets with a very small stop and try to position ourselves when the counter trend traders are getting in we are going to try to position the opposite on those guys and gals and that creates order flow for us in the direction that we want to go called a retracement I was a guest speaker at the Las Vegas trade show a couple years ago in November I had the uh, luxury of uh, being the guest speaker out there, and I, I talked to a lot of traders. There's almost about 6,000 traders around the world that attended. And the one thing I noticed uh, that when talking with these traders and actually other vendors that uh, use day trading software, um, a lot of uh, uh, those traders are counter trend traders. In fact, if I had to throw a number out there, I'd say at least 85 to 95 percent of the traders I talk to are counter trend traders or trying to fade the overall trend and that's exactly opposite what we do in here we are actually trend traders by nature and we try to uh, buy retracements with the overall trend direction now how can we do that um, I was lucky enough to uh, run into two of the, the top traders that in my mind uh, Tom DeMarc and also Larry Williams and um, I went to uh, uh, back in the 90s early 90s and mid 90s I went to a few of their seminars and the one thing I've noticed with those guys is they love trading Fibonacci retracements and they are retracement traders also so over the years I put that together into my own trading system and um, that's how I came up with this uh, just years and years of trading these different markets and uh, this is what I come up with now that being said the number one thing for me is I do not want to be a counter trend trader I've seen traders come in and out of these markets or come from different vendors different software I have never seen one counter trend trader make any money and that's just the bottom line um, I've seen a lot of traders blow their accounts up that have come from other vendors or by themselves and they typically were trying to catch the falling knife or jump in front of the runaway train in other words they're trying to catch the high in a robust market going up or they're trying to catch a bottom in a falling market just when they're trying to mark the market down that's why I came up with the system this system will try to keep you on the right side of the market and that is the key to success with a system like this let's go let's get started I have a Rinko bar this is a our trend chart now our trend chart is universal in all markets works on all markets let's go over today's trading on the whole trading day I blow that up now I'm going to show you results from this from I like to look at them from 7 o'clock in the morning a.m. Eastern to uh, 2 30 in the afternoon that's you know just around 15 to 8 in the morning you can start seeing volume really pick up in futures and all the way to around 2.30 when the pit closes in crude. So I'm going to show you today the results are from 7 a.m. Eastern all the way to um, uh, uh, 2.30 in the afternoon Eastern. Okay, This works around the clock, 23 out of 24 hours a day. It's the same setup. It doesn't matter if you're a European trader or a domestic trader. It works the exact same way. Okay, You just have a little less volume in the morning hours. The key to Rinko bars is this. We actually developed our own Rinko bar. There's a lot of Rinko bars out there. You can get it in all these trading forums, and you can download a Rinko bar. Ninja Trader has its own Rinko bar, TradeStation, all these other platforms, uh, Think and Sw or Swim. Um, this is very, very different than all the standard Rinko bars. I have a trend filter built in. What I just told you is, is I do not like to counter trend trade. Uh, so I like to look to buy pullbacks with overall market direction. But in doing that, since I know that counter trend traders are typically always wrong, or retail traders I call them, 
because they're on the wrong side of the market because they're using a MAC, a moving average coverage divergence. So they're using stochastics uh, for overbought or oversold situations or an RSI or they're using, you know, just all these different lagging indicators. And why do you think that all these vendors give you indicators for free? Because typically every indicator works once, but do they work on a daily basis? The answer is no. You have to understand order flow. I was a small order execution trader. Uh, we, we called us SOS traders back in the 90s, and we just traded order flow. And I transformed into that knowledge into trading futures. Everything is about order flow, supply and demand. So what I did then is I came up with a trend filter, and that's what you're looking at, this Rinko bar. We custom made our own Rinko bar, and we actually locked it where Ninja Trader doesn't allow you to lock uh, um, Rinko, I mean bars, so we built our own locking system to lock this to our own vendor app. So we know how important this is because without our, our Rinko bar, our trend filter built into our Rinko bar, this system would not be as robust as it is. That being said, let me show you how you do this. This is just plain three moving averages on top of my trend filter. And this is a longer Rinko bar, and this is crude oil today, the whole trading day. Okay, I'll just, just let me get this down a little bit there. That's the whole trading day on crude from midnight all the way to the close. All right, where do you find trades at? How do you know when to get in? How do you know when to get out? Where, where can I spot trades? Well, I just told you that I developed a beautiful, I could not do it with Ninja 7 because Ninja 7 didn't have the capabilities for me to plug all my filters in. So Ninja 8, when Ninja 8 was released, it's more robust and I was able to build a trend filter because I could only use market profile back in the day to find trend. Now I can use a trend filter to find the, the exact trend of any market, any given day, any given time, any futures, any stocks, any forks, any currency. I can takes me a half a second to realize if I'm a net buyer or net seller. Now, if I know when I'm buying and selling, how do I know when to get in and where are the counter trend traders trying to position themselves? What I've done is I use moving averages for one reason. I use them for trend direction. I do not use them for support and resistance. I do not use them for crossover systems because they're lagging, okay? There are systems out there that will tell you you can look at a weekly chart, a daily chart, a, a five-minute chart, and a 60-minute chart. When they all line up on the same moving average, uh, let's all buy and sell. That is just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard because moving averages are lagging by nature. They are not order flow. Moving averages have nothing to do with order flow. So if you believe that moving averages are support and resistance on the 200, the 50, the 34, the 89 moving average, all these crazy moving averages, you are going to find yourself very, very wrong in the markets because moving averages are lagging, just like a MAC is, just like RSI, just like stochastic, etc. You need to trade order flow. So what I did is when I come up and I built this trend filter, I wanted to, to show me when the wrongly positioned traders are getting in. Let me see where the counter trend traders are because from my experience and from the hundreds and, um, and uh, hundreds and hundreds of traders that I talk to and I work with over the years and that I know that we know that counter trend traders typically fail. So let me find out when are they getting in because when they're getting in, I want to be look at doing what? I want to do the opposite of what they're doing. Here's how we do it. So the ingredients are already plugged in on your trend filter. I added three moving averages. I got a small moving average here. It's just a simple moving average. Uh, uh, this is a simple eight. Here's a simple 20 and the 50. The, the numbers are not that important, meaning uh, it, all moving averages work to some degree. It, there's no magical moving average. People, traders say the uh, 34 EMA is amazing, or the 89 EMA is amazing, or the 200 is amazing, and the 50 is amazing. You know, back in the day, maybe in the, in the 70s and 80s and 90s, when the 50 crossed through the 200, it was showing an uptrend or vice versa. It doesn't work that way anymore. I mean, this is, we're electronically traded markets. So, you know, there's a lot of volume coming in and out of these markets and moving averages. You just can't rely on them for that purpose. I can rely on them to show me trend direction, though, with my trend filter. And what I've, what I've done is this. I got a small moving average. I got an intermediate moving average and a larger moving average. I can, if I'm below all three, I'm in a hard trend down. If I'm above all three, I'm in a hard trend up. All right, that's very simple. But I like to look at it another way. If, I, if I'm below the body of my candle, the open versus close, the body of the candle, if it's below the small MA, then I know that I'm in a mark down. I mean, they're trying to mark the market down. If I'm closing, if I get inside of the smaller MA on the upside, I know they're trying to mark the market up. 
Okay, so in, in other words, once you close around 90% of a candle inside that small MA, that's typically going to be your trend in that particular market. Now, the beautiful thing about it is, is once you know the overall trend, is I want to find out when to pop in the market opposite of overall trend. So what I want to do is, is I want to see when an opposite color candle is formed because that is telling me that it's going against my trend filter. So let me just blow this up a little, a little bit, explain this in detail to you. So we know that I just said that if we are below the body of the candle, which is the open versus close, novice traders, they sometimes think that the highs and lows in the mark in the candles the most important that is not true it is the open versus close relationship that is the most important part of the candle that is the box the green box and the red box if I see the open versus close red red I'm closing below I can break through this small moving average enter bar it doesn't matter they're, they're just retracing the market to continue it lower this is going to be where my trades gonna happen right here that's where a trades gonna be happening this is where the trades gonna be happening this I can show you how you can catch these highs and then vice versa, as the market moves back up and my small MA crosses through my intermediate, this is where you want to be buyer on this retracement. I'm going to show you how to get into the exact bar there. I'm going to show you how to get an exact bar here. And I'm going to show you how to get into an exact. These are all from today's trading. They all worked out beautiful. And then at the close, we had this little run at the close here. So those were all opportunities this morning. If you go from 7 to 2 30 in the afternoon, you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven opportunities in the market to get shorter along the market. Now that's fine and dandy where I pointed the arrows, but how can I find it live when it's happening live? The best way to do it, and you guys can uh, stay in the room if you're new traders, stay in the room for tomorrow's action. The market will open up at 6 p.m. tonight, run all the way through to uh, tomorrow at 5 o'clock before I shut down for the weekend. But you'll see tomorrow, I'll be in the room tomorrow too. But the best thing to do, why did I point to this arrow here because I know my trend filter I'm below the small MA I'm below all three my larger intermediate and smaller MA most importantly I'm below my small MA the open versus close is below it some red bar let me mark this up here for you so I'll show you how to do this really simple technique and then I'm going to show you how we can really nail this thing down very very powerful hold on one sec and like I said this works on all markets does it matter it's universal. All right, so here we're red, red bar, red bar, red open versus close, red, red, red. Here we go. First close of a green bar. What does that tell me? How does that educate me that we are into a possible trade? It educates me on a possible trade because we know that if it closes green, based upon my trend filter that I built into this Rinko bar, we have counter trend traders marking the market up against overall trend down. That's beautiful. That's what we want. And the great ones are one bar trades because they're fast moving. Many things can move pretty fast. So if it closes green, I'm going to go to my next step on how I enter, and I'm going to show you how to enter the market. Let me just show you how you set it up first. This is our setup chart. This is the only chart you really need until to, to set a trade up. In other words, I tell traders, if you want to trade multiple markets, get a 24-inch monitor or 26, whatever, and just have a trend chart on four or five different markets. Wait till the counter trend traders come in. You're setting yourself up for a trade. Okay, I like to do that. It's a great way to do it. So here's the green bar. This is a trade to the downside. Counter trend traders come in here. This is a trade setup. I'll show you how we got in this one. Counter trend traders pumped it all the way up here. Green, green, green. Right there, swing high. I'm gonna show you how I get in that swing high. Then we had a shift in the market. The shift in the market, my smaller MA crossed up. More importantly, right there is where my small may crossed up, and I'm above my trend filter. As long as it keeps closing above my trend filter, not closing below it, the body of the candle, it's trend up. We were trend up all the way into the close, all right, all the way up. That's a straddle. It's not closing below it. That's straddling the small MA. That's a straddle. So you want to buy that dip. I'm going to show you how we buy it, too. Buy the dip. So this was a short because the wrong position traders got caught here trying to buy the market. They tried to buy the market here. They were wrong. Tried to buy the market here. They were wrong. Then we had a change in shift momentum. It crossed over. We're above the small MA. They tried to sell the market. They think it's continued downtrend. It's actually they were wrong. I'm going to show you how to catch a low here, 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 
in here. In other words, wait for an opposite color candle. That's going to tell you step one that a possible trade is on deck. All right, that being said, let me show you. Here's how you can do it. All right, so this is based upon this is today's trading. Now, there's two ways you can do it. You can do it like I like to see a runner's run. You're going to have scalpers with this system that like to get in and scalp because this works really well, this system on catching counter trend traders. In other words, they're going to take every single trade that I just pointed to right there. They're going to take every single trade in the direction of the overall catching the rolling position traders, right? Or this chart shows you where this was a, a um, initial first target of, let's see what I have on here, of 15 ticks, I believe. What was it? 15, 20 ticks. Initial first target was 20 ticks. Second target was 100 ticks and had a trail of 25 ticks. So target one was 20 ticks. Target two was 100 ticks, trail of 25 ticks. My stop loss is always, and I'll go over this, always two ticks below the swing high or swing low after the rolling position, after you pull the trigger, no matter what. If you get, if it closes below, I mean, gets below two ticks below that swing low or swing high, meaning after you get in, that swing low or swing high, then you want to stop yourself out at a small stop. And we'll go over that too. All right, so this is the accuracy of the system. You can see today it's very, very accurate um, just based upon getting in with a trail, you can catch some really nice runners. Now, what I like to do is like I like to use a trail in mine. So you know you can go break even plus one if it if it turns on you in flat chop markets. You can have a target one, target two, and then you can have a trail on that also. And that's an ATM machine. At daytradingthefutures.com, if you go to our it shows you how to put that trail in. Uh, we have a video on it how to do it. So you guys can do that on how to put target one, target two in a trail. But this is how you can do it. So you can take from just looking at that blank chart, just looking at that blank chart, that trend chart told you every single trade that you possibly should be taking on when the counter trend traders are jumping in the market. And then you can transition that into popping in the market when you see this. Now, what you can do, and let me show you the equity curve on this. Now, remember, uh, past uh, results are not indicative of future results. I mean, we all know that. That's why we have a disclaimer at daytradingthefutures.com. So if you've never traded futures before or stocks, currency, or any other instrument, please visit our website. Look at the disclaimer. I don't want you guys thinking, uh, you know. Um, so, but make sure that you understand that this is what the rhythm I'm trying to get into. Now, what we can do is instead of taking a trail, to show you the accuracy of the system, I'll, I'll show you the accuracy of the system just doing the technique I showed you. Let's say we just take every single trade here, and I pop every single trade here from what? From when we caught the rolling position traders. In other words, here, see, I'm not trailing. This is just a 10 and 13 tick target, 10 target and a 13 tick target in a second. Just to show you uh, a, an equity curve on this over the last month. I'll show you what we're looking at. But if you look, here's a stop out because see we had a wrongly positioned traders come in here. It closed above my this I had right at the high, the stop right at the high. Uh, but two ticks above the high is suffice. And then we got the winner, 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 and then winner right there. So this is how I'm going to show you the results over the last month to show you how powerful the system can be with this technique. And then we'll get right into the technique. Now, if you look with this type of technique, if I look at the equity curve, if you look at the percentage win, you know, we're, we're, we're batting right around, if you look over the, last, over the last month, just with taking trades from 7 o'clock in the morning all the way to uh, 2.30 in the afternoon, and, you know, you're, we're batting right around 80%, 80, 80, I believe it's 83%. But remember, everybody's going to have different slippage, so, you know, you can't say these are the exact results you're going to get, and we're not saying that you're going to get these exact results because, obviously, Past performance doesn't indicate future results, so make sure you understand that. Um, but if you notice, we, we usually, on any given day, the reason I want to show you this chart, not be, uh, the accuracy is great, but I want to show you the number of trades typically. If you look on the trades, if I go over the, over the last month from, you know, today, today it was, uh, you know, we had 15 first target because everybody has a different second runner, and it's hard to, sh I, I don't want to beef this thing up. 
I can really inflate these numbers if I go for a, a long runner. Like my last chart, you know, this the profit doubled. It was double this. But, you know, we're not all going to have large runners like that. So this is just getting in with the 10 to 13 first second. And, uh, but you can see the number of trades. The most important part of this chart is you can see the number of opportunities you're going to get with a system like this. That's a lot of opportunity right there for us, okay? So that's the great thing about the system. It gives us a lot of opportunity to, to get into these setups with small risks. Now, let me show you how we're going to pop in this thing. So we all know, let me get this off here. We all know that this is my trend chart, okay? It's my trend chart. So we want to uh, we want to see where the wrong position traders are going against trend. That's what we're trying to do. Now, I just showed you those trade setups based upon this chart. That's exactly what it came off of, based upon uh, 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 right when a green reversal bar comes in and closes. How do I get in then? I want to show you a chart called Fibonacci retracements. And um, traders see this. This is my SIM chart. Once I see a wrongly positioned traders getting in, in other words, if I see a can, this is a whole trading day. If I see an opposite, this is uh, crude oil, Steve. Everything I'm showing you is crude from today in the last month. So once I see that I got a green colored Rinko bar when it was all red and it's against overall trend, I want to look at this right here. I want to look at this chart. I have these red dots and these blue dots. The red dots are what? That's resistance. The blue dots are support. And I have these arrows that automatically fire off. These arrows are based upon Fibonacci retracements. If any of you guys followed me back in the day, there used to be red dots and blue dots for Fibonacci retracements on Confluence. So these arrows will automatically fire at the swing highs and swing lows at a point, any, any point in time if it's at a sweet spot on a retracement. But the reason I'm showing you this chart is this. I just show you the most important chart is this chart right here. If I'm in a downtrend and that closes green, let's take a look at this first trade here. If that closes green, that educates me, wrongly position traders are getting in. As soon as that bar closes, I'm going to look for a retracement short. How can I time the trade then? These dots give me an, it educates me where there's an area where I need to be looking at on getting into the trade. Now this trade I just showed you happened right here. And it was a beautiful looking setup. Right there is where that trade happened. So right when it closed green down here, closed green, I want to start watching when mar the market comes in within two ticks of these symmetry dots. They're called symmetry dots. When the market comes within two ticks, I want to look to pull myself in the market because, A, I'm catching the wrongly positioned traders on my trend chart. B, I'm actually trying to buy or sell symmetry on a retracement. Now, how can I do that? I'm going to show you how to do it. So in other words, all those trades – that I just showed you that happened on the trend chart, this accompanied, accompanied all those trades, all of them. That caught the low there. Look how it comes down to my symmetry dots. This is where the trend filter turned opposite color. Now, if it, it can exceed it, now here, this example right here, it can come down and notice right here how the body of the candle, look how the body of the candle came down to my sim dots. But it did not close below it. What? What's the most important thing I educate you guys about? The open versus close. Look how the open versus close on this smaller. This is a smaller Renko bar. This is a five sim Renko. This is half of my trend chart. Look how it comes right down to it, right at symmetry. The rule of thumb is this. A, I want to follow my trend chart and wait for an opposite color candle to come in. I'm, I know I'm going to position myself against the wrongly, I mean, against the wrongly positioned traders. That's what I want to do. B. Let me find the area then. I know the counter trend traders are coming in. Where are they going to try to push it to? I'll try to find my SIM dots only after the trend chart sets it up because these SIM dots by themselves are absolutely worthless. Symmetry of the market, you'll get killed trying to trade just these SIM dots. You'll get smoked because you don't know when the counter trend traders are coming in. But my trend chart set it up. So since it set it up, I want to see it come within a couple ticks or even exceed. It can exceed. It can exceed. See right here? It never closed below it here also. It can exceed it, enter bar, just can't close below it. And then I'm going to show you how to pull yourself in right here also. See, this actually stopped at the exact tick, right there to the exact tick. 
that arrow fired also that gave you a confirmation to pull yourself in the market this came within one tick after um, the wrongly positioned traders were coming in and that Fibonacci arrow fired right at this bar when it closed and this one right here fired also and this is a beautiful one because it's a break retest the symmetry because I have another trade set up not only are the red resistance the blue support so if I break blue and I retest blue again and I get a red arrow that tells me that's called a rejection trade break retest trade ABC short that was a beautiful one right there break retest there you go every single one of those on this chart were set up by the trend chart every single one of those trades this one this one this one this one that's a small one this one and this one right here also so these were all set up on the trend chart so that's how I can that's how I can confirm where I need to be buying and selling, it's got to come with minimum within two ticks of symmetry. If I'm five, ten ticks away from symmetry, I'm putting myself in a bad position because I'm not buying and selling a retracement. In other words, this chart helps me determine that the market has retraced enough to take a low risk trade. Okay? So that's the second step is looking at this chart, seeing where the symmetry is. First step is my trend chart. Where's the opposite color bar, like today, against the trend filter? Then once it closes, opposite color, I want to see where my SIM dots are. Let the market come minimum within two ticks of it. And then we're going to look to position ourselves in the market. Now, how can I then pull the trigger? There's a way we can pull the trigger, and here's how we do it. On my down here, the, the market delta chart. This is the market delta chart. Market delta chart, there's numbers below here on this market delta. This is the last phase that you're going to look at to pull the trigger. This, this is called the pull the trigger chart or market delta chart. What market delta basically is, is market delta is relationship between the bid and the ask. Are there more net, are, are, are they trying to mark the market up? Are they trying to mark the market down between the bid and the ask? That's basically in summation what market delta is. Well, what I like to do is, is I like to see um, um, these numbers down here. If it's over 200 in crude, on one of these numbers, then I know I got a big buy or sell imbalance. So that's what market delta does. But let me, this is, I have this down to the bottom right, but let me show you why that little average is on there, that moving average. Let me show you, I circled these earlier from all these. So all these trades right here that you see right there on my trend chart, let me show you how we can pull ourselves, or pull ourselves in with market delta. So when it closes red, it's obviously sell imbalance. When it closes green, it's a buy imbalance. Let me just show you based upon the moving averages on what's called a, called a squeeze play. What happens is the market squeezes after wrongly positioned traders gets in for a continuation pattern. Let me show you. The best way to trade this, these are all based upon trades that happened today. Let me show you a neat technique. So what you can do then is this. We know that the trend filter sets it up. The trend filter sets it up. Now market delta will have imbalances below. I don't have it on this chart, but it will be in the room and on your own charts but this is where we had wrongly positioned traders getting in so it was green bar green bar green bar green bar on the trend filter against I mean this is the first green bar sorry one big giant green bar what happened was was that once you see that green bar form start watching your market delta if it comes within a couple ticks of symmetry this landed right on symmetry hit its head once it closes a portion of the candle below that smaller MA, the smaller MA is the smallest one. I got it shaded a little bit different. Once it closes below a portion of the body, it doesn't have to be. It can be 25% of the candle, 50% of the candle, 90% of the candle. I just need to close below it. These are not closed below it. See, this is not a closed below it. That's not a close. That's not a close. That's not a close. Coming up, coming up, coming up. There's a close. That's your entry. Your entry is going to be the open of the next bar. Your stop loss, no matter what, is two ticks above that swing high. Now, some traders like to use three ticks in case it's an end top or W bottom, which you can do. So if you want to do that, no problem. But um, your stop loss is going to be a couple ticks above that swing. Just in case, that's a small M right there, small M. Then she start tanking. All right, so that is an entry technique after what? The trend chart close an opposite color candle, showing that counter trend traders are coming in. B. My symmetry, symmetry dots came with a minimum of two ticks of it. I know I'm in the right place on a retracement. C, I want to enter now. The entry is going to be a partial candle close. There is your entry. Now, 
I do have market delta below here. If you see a big sell imbalance, a bigger, the bigger the number, the better. That's obviously below there. You'll see it. Now, I don't have all these MAs in the room to show you. I only have the small one because that's the pulling bar. I'm going to show you why you want to put these three MAs on your system because when you have it on your own system, it shows you what a squeeze is. What is a squeeze? When On a retracement, after I see this happen, okay, remember, I want to see this happen right here. That right there, I want to see it happen right, right there. I want to see a green bar. There's a green bar right here, green bar. Green bar is in place. So say so the green bar is in place. What I want to see is I want to see a retracement on this chart. I want to see this small MA cross above my inter intermediate MA. And not even cross and come up and touch it and even roll over. That's the best type to pull myself in. In other words, before I get pulled in to the market on a pull-in bar right here with a small MA, I want to see that intermediate either come up and touch it and bounce right off of it and get a pull-in bar. Or I want to see it come up right to that larger MA, ride it, and then get a pull-in bar. Why? Because the market is into, into what's called a squeeze. A squeeze is when price gets really tight. So what I found is the time frame on my trend chart. So what I can do is, is I can time my trade by seeing if it's going to squeeze. And a squeeze is, see how the small MA comes up, and then I get a close below it, you're good to go. Now, the great squeezes will look like this. Here's another trade. Here's the next trade that came up on the trend chart. The next trade on the trend chart was here. So if I look at this trade on this one, let's take a look at the trend chart. This one happened right there, right here on this trade. There's your green bar. Once that green bar closes, you can watch where your SIM dots are. It came right and touched the exact tick on the symmetry. I want to watch my pull-in bar then. Here's my bars. Look at this. Look how my smaller MA comes up and squeezes up against my intermediate MA. These are going to be the good ones. The real big ones are going to be when it squeezes and come up and bounces off my, my larger MA, which I'll show you. We had four of them in the last week that were over 100 ticks. So when that squeezes up against it after the wrongly positioned traders come in, then wait for a body of the candle close. Don't doesn't have to be a whole body, just a partial candle close. There you go. And then you can put your stop loss two ticks above the swing high. Very small stop. Okay. Next trade comes up. Let's keep it rolling. Next trade was a deeper retracement. This is a really big squeeze. They squeeze a lot of traders out of this market. It came up, came up. This actually touched my symmetry dots. And there's your close inside of it. Um, there's your close, your stop loss of two ticks below the swing high, above the swing high. That's a pretty robust trade. But then we had a change in sentiment, and we started moving back up. Now, what happened is, if you look what happened here at just after 1030, after 1030, right here, see this? See how it got inside my small MA? Inside my small MA, it started moving up. Then the wrongly positioned traders got caught. Now, if you were a moving average technician, there's no way you would touch this chart right? You're like, there's no way I would touch this chart because it technically looks like the moving average in a downtrend. However, my smaller MA crossed above my intermediate and more importantly, I'm above the small MA that educates me. I can buy this retracement. So once the red bar prints, what I want to do, where's my symmetry dots? It touches right exactly on my symmetries, almost to the exact tick. It gave me the area. Let me pull myself in the market. Here's my pull in. So look at the pull in, look at the market squeeze. That's when it closed. Uh, that, that's when it moved up. Here's your retracement. Red, 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 red. Look at my moving average. Small moving average squeeze right against the, the larger MA. That's a squeeze play now. Wait for a close above. Partial candle close. My stop loss is very small because I'm using a small Rinko. Very small stop. Market just explodes to the upside. All right, my next trade. Let's take a look at it. Now, these are the great squeezes right here. If your small goes above, uh, to your intermediate, Rides right on it, and there's your close. Let's look at that, 11.05. Did we have a red bar to catch the wrongly positioned traders? Remember, the trend chart sets all this up. There it is, right here at this bar, this one right here, right there. Did we catch the wrongly positioned traders? We did. How does it look like on, it touches my symmetry dots. Look at it, squeeze. There they're coming together. Squeeze is really nice. And there's a close, partial candle close, stop loss, two ticks below the swing low. Another good one. All right, so then we move on. We come up, and we have another squeeze. Let's take a look at the trend chart, 1136. Did it have a red bar? 
There's my red bar showing the counter trend traders are coming in. Once it comes in, where's my symmetry dots? Can I see where my sim dots are? So I can position myself. It's got to be a minimum within two ticks of symmetry. Okay, I can exceed it, just not close below it. Once it does that, I can go to my market delta chart. And there's your squeeze. Cross down. It squeezes right. It can cross below. This doesn't matter. Remember, we don't use moving average crossover systems. I want to see these moving averages come together, get tight. I want to see them get tight. Because if it gets tight, I already know I got the counter trend traders coming in. Right when it gets tight, I know to look for a close above the smaller MA. That's going to be my confirmation to pull in. There's your pull in bar, your stop loss, two ticks below the swing low. There's another one. So you can see the market pulls itself up into the close. So you can use that market delta. That's why that market delta is down there to your bottom right. That's why that's down there to your bottom right for market delta to pull yourself in the trade. Big numbers over 200 on crude. It's a beautiful buy and sell imbalance. Now, why do I have two charts up here? Well, I got my trend chart right. That's going to educate me when to buy and sell with wrongly positioned traders, number one. Right beside that is my sim dots. That's going to tell me the area has got to come in within a couple ticks and with uh, fib arrows. But what about this chart over to the far right? What happens is sometimes the market is too weak. And it, what happens is a trend filter says, hey, I'm going straight up and I'm going straight down and you better come with me because I'm not retracing. In this period right here, let's say you miss this retracement, right? And you log space from the open versus close with my small MA right here, space. You see space, that's a hard trending market down. How can I get in then? Well, I can't. I may not have to wait for a, I can't wait for a green reversal bar because maybe I may not get it. It may go down 100 ticks without me without reversing. So how can I do it? Well, that's where this small chart over here comes in play. I do not get into these trades, these Fibonacci arrows, unless I'm all red or all green and I have space in between my trend chart. If you have space, you can take these trades on pullbacks. They are beautiful trades. They can really, really do well. So this, the market's really weak, right, on my trend filter. So right there, you can take those Fib arrows on a retracement. The market's really weak. That's why I have a small Fibonacci chart, Fib arrows, for that situation, right? Remember, on this chart right here, when, when, when on my trend filter, I don't have to, when it closes the opposite color candle, I need this chart next to me to show you where I'm possibly retracement is with my sim dots. I don't need my sim dots over here for this far right chart. Why? Because I'm below all three MAs already. You can just sell or buy the arrows on a retracement. Now, how you can time it is what happens, and you'll find this out trading this live, is that the bar will tick inch your bar. In other words, you'll come down. You can always see where the arrows fire. You see where, where it touches right there? This is where an arrow fired on my smaller Renko right there at that low. Why? It comes down inch your bar, tick, 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 touches it. You get an arrow that fires on the three. You've been way above the smaller MA. That's a buy, a screaming buy. Screaming by. It's telling you you got momentum hard up. And then here we go again. It ticks, gets away. Big spanko. That's a great one too. So in other words, I have two setups I'm always looking at. I'm looking for a momentum setup with my small Renko bar, my three sim, right? And then I got my retracement setup with my sim dots right here. So I got my momentum set up here when I'm just screaming hard on the trend chart up or down. Screaming above it. And you can see where exactly where they fire. And then I got my deep retracement trade with an offset color candle. Those are the only two setups, and this has worked since I've seen it. And, you know, as far as I go all the way back to 1989 when I started looking at corn and soybeans. So, you know, and I'm, I'm 49 years old. So I, I, I was fortunate enough to trade the actual commodity, uh, corn and soybeans, the actual commodity, you know, because we grew up on a, on a large farm. So that's how I really knew about commodities. All right, because my dad did the futures already. So that's how I kind of learned about futures. But in now being 49 years old is that all those years, year after year after year, the one thing I've learned the most about is that you have to adapt to the market. You have to do what the market's telling you. You cannot tell the market what to do. 
that's the hardest lesson for traders is that I'm either going to be a momentum trader or I'm going to be a retracement trader. And it's going to let you know based upon the trend chart. And then, now, let's say you're in CHOP, though. Let's say you log in and we're in CHOP. There's one other chart you need to be familiar with, and it's my market profile chart. My market profile chart is beautiful because it gives you natural support and resistance. This was a big setup today because my arrow fired right here on symmetry dots right there. It broke below all my profiles. It broke, retested, and we had an arrow that fired here, and that's where we got to pull in, and that's where the wrong, wrong, wrongly positioned traders got caught. But this works great because if I get below my low value area, my control point, and my HVA, there was nothing holding this market up today. I mean, it just said, hey, we're going southbound on the Greyhound. Then I got two important, and these are all my videos. Market profile confuses so many people, but it shouldn't. It's, it's a red, solid blue, solid green, and a thin red, thin green. Because I know if the market's going to counter trend trade itself back up and get back to the upside, it's got to do one thing. It better get back inside my developing profile. That was my buy right there this morning on my pull-in bar right to the exact bar on sim dots and a pull-in with the rolling position traders on the trend chart. Trend chart caught this. But look how market profile agreed. So I use market profile as what? Confluence. Because if I'm outside a profile, my developing is my small green, thin line, and thin red, the market's exploding to that side. If I ever get back inside of it, that's when you can counter trend trade the market back up. All right, so we use market profile over here for that. We also use it for one thing. We use it in case the market is flat. If, let's say we get into a rangy market, flat market. That's a trending market. Um, let's say we get into a range market and we find trend. You see how it comes up to and trend bounces off of it, goes down. It's beautiful. It's great support and resistance. Let me try to find a flat day. Here we go, flat day. You, you want to use market profile on flat days because the one thing you don't want to do is trade retracements in a flat market. And a flat market is when, what, our trend filter sideways. You'll see our moving averages horizontal they're not vertical meaning they're not angled if you see that all you're going to do is sell the high of HVA buy the low of LVA until you break out once you break out you look for a breakout retest like I did today and you go back into trend so that's another tool that we give you guys and gals market profile it's an institutional market profile it's not a 30 minute market profile so that's an added bonus so if I look before closing for you guys and gals if I look at the simplicity of this is this I could just take this chart and this chart right here, those two charts, without any profile or anything, and do very, very well in the market. Just by catching the rolling position traders, pulling myself in like I showed you today. But I've added a lot of ingredients to this to help you out, to help you give you confirmation. I've added Fibonacci arrows to show you where momentum trades are and retracement trades, and I added the sim dots to help you find out where you can position yourself in the market on these sim dots with overall pull in on market delta. So these are added bonuses. Okay, this chart right here, you warm up to the trend chart, you're you're halfway there already because you're getting the right trend of the market. Okay? That's how we do things.